meeting in regular session on Monday, September 22nd, 2014. Please note, if you wish to be heard at this meeting, please sign the speaker list on the table uh, there in the corner. Uh, the president has the right to limit the amount of time each speaker has for each agenda item. Each speaker will have two minutes to speak for each agenda item. Our chaplains are not here. Okay, we'll have the invocation led by our city administrator, Christy Mills, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Mayor Mo. Let's pray. Father, we're just so thankful that we can come before you tonight in this new room that you built for us that we can serve your people. Father, we thank you for those that came out tonight to see how their money is being spent. And there's a room that will last for generations to come. We're just so thankful for all you have done for the city of Laurel. We pray that we will continue to earn your blessings. We ask those that are here tonight to be mindful of how we came about to do this and to that we are here to serve them and when we are serving the citizens we are serving you we just thank you for that opportunity we pray father that you will bless all that are here bless our elected officials as they make the decisions that you would have us to make we thank you for this opportunity for his precious name and all that is holy to you that we pray amen, amen. to the flag of the united states of america to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Rao, would you please call the roll? Ms. Carreri? Here. Ms. Nicholas? Here. Mr. Ricks? Here. Mr. Laz? Here. President Smalls? Here. Mayor Mel? Agenda five is approval of the minutes, um, and we will hold those uh, minutes until our next regularly scheduled meeting, which will be, help me out, Ms. Rao. Thank you. Mr. President, the next meeting will be Wednesday, October the 15th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Uh, so uh, council will uh, approve the minutes uh, at that meeting. <coughs> Agenda item six is the report of the mayor and city council. And uh, tonight I'll start with Councilman Les. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> Wednesday, September 10th, uh, I attended the Patuxent River Commission, which was held in the governor's reception room in Annapolis. The highlight was the presentation of proclamation by the governor, to Senator, Senator Bernie Fowler for his decades of effort, effort on the Patuxent River Commission to clean up the Patuxent River and the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, Bernie has uh, fortunately uh, decided to retire uh, from his efforts. He's gonna come to some of our meetings, but uh, after uh, many, many a year, he said it was time. Uh, September 12th and 13th, I attend the Maryland Municipal League Fall Conference in Annapolis. Um, Saturday, September 13th, I attended the soft opening of Noodles and Company at the Town Center Wall. Uh, the meat was great. The noodles were great. <laughs> Try it. I think you'll like it. And they have small plates for people who can't eat the, the big bowls. Uh, September 16th, I attended the Laurel Historical Society Laurel Museum unveiling of the Laurel Leader archives that they are converting into a text searchable format. The Laurel Library has given them all of their material and it's very impressive and will be a good resource uh, for those that want to do research into the history of Laurel. I'd like to recognize um, Boy Scouts with us tonight that are working on <coughs> their citizenship and community merit badges. This is required for the Eagle Scout. 
Billy Sellers from Troop 602, Andy Sellers from Troop 602. And I'll ask if either one of them wants to say a, re say a w couple of words, come up to the microphone. <laughs> okay, you need to press the button so the green light comes on at the base. Okay, okay. And then you're going to say your name and address for the record, and you can say your few words. I am Billy Sellers. Uh, my address is 10713 Greylock Road. Uh, I'm from Troop 602. I was just the SPL for two terms. I just stepped down. Um, I am currently on staff for National Youth Leadership Training. And this is my brother, Andy. <laughs> we just mentioned that they went to Philmont this uh, summer. Philmont is a, a rustic place. You hike, you ride. And uh, they've got to be in good shape to go out there. And oh, excuse me, they went by motorcycle. But um, when you get there, you get to hike and ride. And um, it's a it's a wonderful place. It was a uh, an endowment from uh, uh, from a, from an from a, uh, a very good person. And it, huh? Wade Phillips. Wade Phillips, and it must always be used uh, in its in the condition it's in now. So it's a very rustic place. Many a Boy Scout's been out there, and uh, it's a wonderful place. So they'll they'll have to write their report, and they'll get the minutes from Miss Rao. Um, like to wish, and finally, I'd like to wish and ha wish a happy birthday to uh, a very important person in our community, Gertrude Poe. Past uh, uh, editor, owner, editor of the Leader, um, and uh, she's getting way up there. So uh, it's good that she's still with us. That completes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman Les. Councilman Ricks. I did. A, excuse me. I did a lot of the things that Mike mentioned. I also attended the fall conference of MML in Annapolis. I attended the Giddings um, Scholarship Program, Softball League Program at McCullough Field. I testified before the Prince George's County Council on the Maryland LOSAP uh, Program, which is a retirement program for the volunteer firemen, uh, men and women here in the state of Maryland, and especially in Prince George's County, where after 15 years, the county is considering raising some of the retirement benefits uh, for the men and women that have served in the past 25, for the past uh, period, uh, at least 25 years of time. And I also attended the Leader Archives demonstration. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Ricks. Councilwoman Nicholas. Thank you. In addition to what's already been mentioned, me. I attended the Oakland Presbyterian's um, informational meeting on human trafficking, and I also attended the solar energy meeting that was in the Patuxent Green uh, community. That's it. Thank you. Councilwoman McCrary. Thank you, Mr. President. It's all been said. <laughs> Have a good evening. That's it. Uh, I'll mention uh, before I give my report that uh, we're just coming off of a 30-day break. Uh, and while you've heard what my colleagues here uh, have been doing during that break, there was no uh, walking on the beach. There was no... Uh, picnics and outings, we, we spent those 30 days uh, working in our community. Uh, I also, as Councilwoman Nicholas mentioned, attended the Human Trafficking Forum. Uh, there is a piece of legislation that passed last, last uh, General Assembly uh, that uh, addresses human trafficking. In fact, there is a number of uh, bits of legislation that address human trafficking in the state of Maryland. Uh, and uh, so attending that forum and hearing from survivors uh, of human trafficking uh, was, was really moving. I had the opportunity to work with the city of Annapolis as a member of a selection team uh, for their uh, city manager. Uh, it was a very 
enjoyable time. I, I learned a lot about the city of Annapolis, although I worked there that I didn't know in terms of the city's operation. Uh, and that concluded with the selection team being before uh, the mayor and city council actually last week uh, to go over our process that we went through. Uh, we had well over uh, 100 applicants. Uh, we went through most of those resumes uh, and narrowed our selection down to three uh, candidates that we provided to the mayor. On Sunday, I uh, participated as a judge in our dog show. Um, that was at McCullough Field. Uh, it was the first time I, I, I participated in, uh, in the dog show. It won't be the last. I really enjoyed it. There were some beautiful animals out there. Uh, the dog lovers uh, and owners uh, who were there really put a lot of effort uh, and work into training their dogs and grooming their pets. You could really see it. So that was a, a, a great time. And I'd just like to finish by wishing my grandson, CJ, happy birthday, uh, albeit I'm a couple of days early. His birthday is on the 24th uh, of this month. He'll be turning 12. Most of you here know CJ, and he's been around uh, City Hall for some time with me. Uh, so happy birthday. That's my report. Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, a couple things. Uh, we did have um, our public uh, hearing on the flood uh, at Partnership Hall. I want to thank all those that came out and thank Fleming and for putting on the program and we have uh, provided that information to other elected officials. The uh, cops camp uh, graduation at Goody Lake, I want to thank the police chief uh, and his staff for again holding uh, cops camp. I think it's a great program for our kids and uh, I want to thank the council as well for supporting and funding that as well. The um, Laurel Youth uh, Music Showcase, uh, I want to acknowledge and thank them for uh, all their uh, commitment I think uh, this year um, was uh, just as good, if not better, than last year's. And um, we again look forward to working with Breezy and others to make it happen again. The, um, you may have seen that the uh, Marin City Council did take the ALS, uh, bike, uh, ALS Ice Bucket Challenge in front of Municipal Center here. We were able to make a little money for the cause and want to thank them and appreciate all the city staff that and the former mayors got to uh, pour the ice over the elected officials here. The um, Centennial Park um, is pretty much done, Mike, almost done. Um, we were supposed to have a city hall in the park there. We ended up having to cancel that. Um, we hope to have a, a little ribbon cutting over at the um, Centennial Park where the new skate park has, uh, has been added as well as some enhancements to the park. I think um, it's over there the other day. It look, really looks, looks nice and one of uh, say thanks to Mike and his staff for the work that they continue to do. I did have the opportunity to attend the Emancipation Day celebration and uh, parade, and I want to thank, uh, again, St. Mark's for uh, coordinating and all the work that they do to make sure that program continues. The Doggy Dip Day at the Municipal Pool, um, I think they had roughly over 150 dogs uh, take part, and uh, it was the pool was packed with uh, dogs. So it was a good event uh, every year, and I think people have a lot of fun uh, doing that. Did have the opportunity as well to attend the neighborhood meet and greet to discuss a solar array installation at Greenview Drive at the Tux of Greens. And then on the 12th, uh, the Muppets uh, Most Wanted movie was at McCullough Field. I think that was a very good turnout as well. We uh, did work with the Laurel Lions Club for their car show, their annual car show here at um, City Hall in the Municipal Center. And uh, although the um, rain um, Kind of put a damper on things they continued they had a good turnout and uh hopefully next year uh, be a lot better for them and you did uh hear about the uh, poe chapel dedication uh win window insulated installation at the first united methodist church and uh, i want to congratulate um gertrude on, on that as well and as you heard the uh, dog show did uh um, happen there at mccullough field again and again i think um somebody just watching I uh, think the judges as well as many of the citizens themselves had a really good time. Uh, thank you for judging there. Uh, I do have a couple of proclamations, Mr. President. I'd like to go down and read uh, just a couple of announcements. On September the 25th, the City of Laurel National Preparedness Month event at the uh, Laurel Volunteer Fire Department from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. It will be held downstairs and public is welcome. We encourage you to participate and be involved. 
Uh, and then on September the 28th is River uh, Riverfest uh, at Riverfront Park from 12 until 5 p.m. I have a uh, proclamation that I'd like to read, and uh, it's uh, Proclamation 2014-15, whereas American syst Amer America's system of public lands includes parks, unique landscape forests, uh, wildlife refuge, historical trails, nat natural streams, as well as wetlands, and whereas public lands provide locally accessible nature and cultural resources for environmental learning, wealth, wildlife appreciation and recreation, whereas public lands promote civic ideals that include shared stewardship and recognition of public ownership and active support of the community, and whereas recognition opportunities offered by public lands help family and individuals lead active in lifestyle, active lifestyles and reduce uh, childhood obesity, and whereas National Public Lands Day is the nation's largest single day volunteer effort for public lands and is coordinated by the National Environmental Education Foundation City park systems throughout the nation will, uh, will join the federal agencies such as the Bureau of Land Management, Department of Defense, Environmental Protection Agency, National Park Service, U.S. Corps of Engineers, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, Serv Wildlife Services, and U.S. Forestry Service. Now, therefore, I, Craig A. Moe, the mayor of the city of Law, do hereby proclaim September the 27th, 2014, as the 21st National Public Lands Day in the city of Law. Mike, are you going to accept this? That's Mike Lotsky, our director of Park and Recs, to come forward and accept this. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor and City Council. I appreciate the. Um, I'm, I'm a big supporter of public lands, as you might think, being a recreation guy. We're very proud of the uh, parks and the public lands that the city has, and uh, we, we thank that the mayor and city council continues to fund us to be able to maintain these lands and provide the uh, recreation to the public. So thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, second proclamation is 2014-16, uh, whereas the month of September has been recognized as National Preparedness Month, and whereas before emergencies occur, we must make sure that we're ready to respond, and it's and it every Americans and it's every American's responsibility to be prepared. And whereas emergencies from hurricanes, wildfires, cyber attacks, and terrorist attacks can strike at any time, we should all be aware that local threats and hazards, uh, and resolve to be ready for any crisis and work to inspire a new generation of Americans with the knowledge and experience of protection of protection protecting themselves, their families, and their communities in the face of any challenge. And whereas this year's theme for preparedness is be disaster aware, take action to prepare. And whereas the city of Laura will join with, nation, with the nation's citizens in embracing this valuable opportunity to learn ways that we can prepare for an emergency and assist others in the event of a disaster of any size and duration. Duration, whereas the city of law recognizes the need for our citizens to be prepared, alert, and aware of threats to our community's security and safety, and to seriously contemplate the state of their personal preparedness, increase their self-reliance, and recognize the need to provide for their families in case of an emergency. Now, therefore, I, Craig M.O., the mayor of the city of law, do who I proclaim September the 2014 as National Preparedness Month in the City of Law and urge all citizens of business to develop their own emergency preparedness plan and to work together towards creating a more prepared city. Um, my, uh, Marty is our Director of uh, Emergency Service. Actually, uh, former Mayor DePetro is here. I want to ask both of them to come up um, as Chairman of our Emergency Services Commission as well and work closely. Marty. Thank you, Mayor. Yes. Thanks. You do the talking. Thank you. Um, 
This is National Preparedness Month, and uh, I would encourage everybody in this room and everybody watching this evening to check on your preparedness efforts. Make sure your home, your office, and your loved ones are taken care of. Uh, and I would encourage you to stop by the uh, Laurel Volunteer Fire Department on Cherry Lane, 7411 Cherry Lane, this Thursday evening at 6 o'clock for our preparedness event. There's be a lot of information available to you there, and uh, we'll be more than happy to help you walk through uh, uh, developing your own plan for emergency preparedness. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank, you. thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, before I move to the next agenda item, uh, I want to recognize our school board representative, uh, Ms. Sabrina Epps. Sabrina, you want to say a few words? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's few. Couldn't get too much fewer than that. Thank you. But I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that uh, you were in the room. Uh, agenda item seven is a general public hearing. I'll open a general public hearing at 726. I have one person signed up to speak, Bob DiPietro. Mr. DiPietro, if you'll give your name and address for the record. Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. President, members of the council, my name is Bob DiPietro, 502 Gorman Avenue, Laurel, Maryland. I had asked prior to the meeting that the president would give me uh, courtesy as an old mayor to uh, uh, break the uh, two-minute rule here, to tell you a few things I think you should need to know. On the upside, mid-November, we will soon be announcing the grand opening of the Laurel Town Center. Construction's moving very quickly, but Teeter, Regal Cinema, and several of uh, a few new tenants that we have yet to announce, but will surprise you pretty soon that you'll be very pleased with. Uh, but mid-November is about grand opening time, so uh, we're looking forward to it. A lot of good restaurants are already open. Uh, more are coming online almost daily. Um, so uh, you, you're welcome to come. I would also like to tell you that the Anderson's Corner Project at Van Dusen and Virginia Manor closed today, uh, and so they will be breaking ground. Avalon Bay will be uh, uh, breaking ground probably as early as March. Um, so it will be another really positive development for the city. And uh, at Park Avenue and Phillip Powers, phase one of Laurel Gardens redevelopment uh, is about finished. In four weeks from now, we'll be putting tenants in the first phase. And the second phase has already started, and so it's moving right along. So uh, two redevelopments and one new project, and we're doing pretty good trying to raise enough money for your next budget. Um, <laughs> Last, let me uh, tell you, and it was appropriate because of the mayor's proclamation, um, I want to come here tonight to put it on the record that on behalf of all of us at Anderson's Corner and, and also at Laurel Gardens, we want to make sure it's on the record how much we want to thank the police department and the Department of Inspections and Permits, uh, uh, the, the fire marshal, all the inspectors on the street. And I want to tell you two specific reasons why I want to acknowledge how hard. I'm, I've always believed the city's the best there is in the state. We've always had a top-notch uh, permit division. We've always had the best police department in the state. Let me go up to Anderson's Corner. We've had that property. I appeared before you eight years ago to annex that land. And uh, it's now coming together as the project that uh, you approved. During that process, uh, we had a great deal of unlawful dumping on the property. And it was everything from tires to abandoned cars to trash and just people dumping whatever. Uh, we blockade the driveway. We did everything we could do. And they'd drive around it up. It didn't make any difference. Um, we came to the city with the problem. The owners of the property, Mr. Stamato, Revere Development, we bought an outdoor camera for the city and donated it to the city. And one of the members of the permit division of the city built a bird box. And in the bird box went the camera. And then we started filming and getting tag numbers of illegal trucks. And we found four illegal dumpers who were uh, coming up with their regular trash on the property. And we went to court, and they were all smacked on the hand, and they were all given community service hours. And to date, it's cost us $78,000 to clean the property. 
And so when we talk about the environment, we talk about doing the right things, it'd be helpful if the courthouse in Upper Marlboro would help out a little bit. Because I'm not sure community service is what you get when you illegally dump and some of those materials were toxic, which required us to do a lot of cleaning. So uh, just so you know, through the efforts of the police department, we did bring it to a pretty quick halt. I think the word got around to the illegal thumping crowd. This was not a place to come. They hang cameras in trees, but that's all right. I mean, we proved our point. We got it stopped and it's cleaned up, but they were released on community service. Over at Law Gardens, I want you to know, once again, the police department, and through the efforts of one good citizen in the neighborhood, uh, we asked them to keep an eye on the project while the project was under construction. And in the middle of the night, a citizen who lived in the apartments noticed two men coming onto the property and stealing merchandise from the construction site. The police department arrived in less than three minutes. Both perpetrators were apprehended. We ended up in court two weeks ago, at which time two police officers and that citizen were at the courthouse, police officers coming in after a day's worth of work on their time to go to court. Citizen had to lose time from his job to come and testify. And when the trial started, it never started because there was a deal cut at, at the um, local uh, um, uh, lawyer who was uh, representing the city, county, whoever he'd like to, uh, decided they'd put this on a step docket. Uh, even though they were caught loading the stolen merchandise in their vehicle, and Mr. Crary and Mr. Mamsey will correct me, but a stat docket means you're kind of set off to the side, and if you do something terribly wrong, they might call it back. Maybe that's a good definition. The sad part of it is only one of the perpetrators showed up. The other perpetrator was excused from appearing in court because he was in the Chesapeake Correction Facility because he got arrested since he stole from us, but put on a stat docket. And so, you know, for all you hear about the police and the government employees, they do a first-class job in this town. They should be congratulated because I'm sure it's as frustrating for them as it is for us in our business capacity to watch this kind of stuff go on. And I just hope and encourage the citizen the next time he witnesses something, don't be afraid to pick up a phone. Maybe the system will work the next time. But thank you all, and I sincerely mean it. You got some really nice digs, Mayor. Nice job. Thank you, Mr. DePetro. I have no one else signed up to speak during the general public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the general public hearing at 7.33. Agenda item eight is consideration of a recommendation for fleet acquisition, a four by four pickup truck. Mr. McCullough. Good evening, Mr. President, Mayor, and Council Members. Annually, we put together a, a, a fleet report on, on the vehicles that need to be replaced, and the, this vehicle we've discussed at the work session is a 4x4 pickup, which will come equipped with, with snow plows and various equipments like that. Uh, this will replace one of the old, older vehicles that has over 100,000 miles. An interesting uh, fact about the vehicle that's being replaced is this is the pickup truck that was loaded with supplies to go to our sister city in Laurel, Mississippi, and took a bunch of supplies and some people down there. It's been used in a lot of different things, but it's now getting tired and it's old, and, and so this is a recommendation to replace that vehicle with a new one. The, um, prior to assembling a bid package for the purchase of these vehicles, the department contacted several agencies to inquire if there were any current contracts for a model that equaled or exceeded our needs. Apple Ford, we found, had been awarded the State of Maryland contract, and under their State of Maryland contract, we were able to ride this contract, and that's where we are recommending that we purchase this vehicle. It will be a Ford F-250, it's a 4x4, and they'll come complete with a snowplow and, and other equipment like that. Funding for the purchase of this vehicle is provided in the fiscal year CIP replacement program using GOB funds. The cost of this vehicle is, is $39,975. It is therefore recommended that, that the Marin City Council award the purchase of this vehicle to the total cost of 
$975 writing the Maryland state contract with Apple Ford. Thank you, Mr. McCullough. Council, what's your pleasure? President. Councilman Ricks. Move that we purchase the vehicle for $39,975. Second. Thank you, Councilman Les. Any discussion? <coughs> Ms. Rao, please call the roll. Mr. Ricks. Aye. Mr. Les. Yes. Ms. Crary. Yes. Ms. Nicholas. Yes. President Smalls. I vote yes. Agenda item nine is consideration of a recommendation to award contract LA15-02 street improvement project. Good Sorry. evening again. This, this project includes the construction and repair of concrete curbs, gutters, sidewalks, ADA compliant pedestrian ramps, driveway aprons, full depth patching, and bituminous paving overlay along Woodruff Court, Lotus Court, Hyacinth Court, 12th Street, and Van Dusen Road in the city. Again, we, we put this out, we advertised in the legal newspaper for, for this contact uh, uh, companies that were on our bidders list, and we had a total of, of five, um, five contractors that, that bid on this project. The low bid was M.T. Laney Company in, uh, from Eldensburg, Maryland for $145,000. thousand two hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars we have done business with MT Laney in the past they we consider them to be one of the better contractors that does work on streets in the area and we're their references check out plus we've been satisfied with their work in the past therefore based on their low low bid uh, that they submitted for this project we are recommending that uh, that we go with MT Laney for this particular contract Funding for, for this comes from FY 2015 to 2020 CIP providing funding for the city streets improvement projects. PW 2-066 for 93,000, another project for 93,000, another for 35, giving us the GOB funds to cover the total cost of this project. Thank you, Mr. McCullough. Uh, council, as you recall, we discussed this agenda item in detail at our most recent work session. Mr. President, Councilman Lads, I'll move that we award, approve the award of this contract to M.T. Laney Company out of Ellsburg, Maryland, in the total amount of one hundred eighty-seven thousand eight hundred seventy-five dollars twenty-five cents. It includes twenty-six thousand seven hundred forty as a contingency item for the city streets improvement projects, and fifteen thousand four hundred for additional citywide street repairs. Thank you, Councilman Liz. Is there a second? Second. Councilwoman Nicholas, thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Rao, please call for the vote. Mr. Les? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Ms. Crary? Yes. Mr. Ricks? Yes. President Smalls? I vote yes. Thank, thank you, you, Ms. McCullough. Agenda item 10 is the introduction to first public hearing on ordinance number 1808, text amendment number 235. An ordinance to amend Chapter 20, Land Development and Subdivision, Article 1, Zoning, Division 9, Exceptions and Supplements to the Zoning Regulations of the City of the Laurel City Code, providing an effective date. I've read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open a public hearing at 7.39. Mr. Brock. Mr. President, Text Amendment 235 is an amendment to the uh, exceptions and supplemental regulations of the Unified Land Development Code. Uh, it amends non-residential lot requirements for ground-mounted solar arrays. This provides four setback requirements that are currently not in the regulations, as well as a height requirement. It also requires that a specific site plan shall be submitted and approved by the department uh, before the uh, the array can be erected. It also uh, provides that building codes and electrical codes must also be met uh, before approval. Thank and you, that Mr. Brock. 235. Okay, great. Thank you. I have a number of people signed up to speak. I'd just like to ask everyone to please be mindful of our, our two-minute rule and respectful of that. Uh, and uh, to also add that you cannot yield your time. Each speaker has two minutes. 
Uh, I'll start the list off with uh, Kevin Allen. Mr. Allen, if you'll please come forward and give your name and address for the record. I also have something to give to, to, the, to the mayor, to the council. Okay, if you'll give it to our clerk. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. My name is Kevin Allen, and as a resident of the Patuscan Green community, I am 100% opposed to the projected location of the solar panels arrays, solar panel arrays by Patuscan Green Golf Course. My number one issue here is the fact that the view that I have appreciated for more, for more than 10 years would be severely compromised by 1.25 acres of metal and pole. And what saddens me the most is the golf course did not bother to notify the residents earlier in this process, has not presented any alternatives to the projected location, and in my opinion, did a subpar job informing the neighborhood about the first meeting to our knowledge, which was held on September the 11th. The notification or invitation, as they phrased it, was misleading and nondescript. However, I still attended. The entire focus was on the benefits of the country club, yet is, is going to decrease our residential value by reducing the appeal of the view, for starters. As direct neighbors to this structure, there are not even future plans to extend this energy efficient solution to the community. Yet we have to assume the new eyesore in this neighborhood guarded by a chain link fence and baby trees. If I had more time, I would share more testimony, but the fact is 120 seconds is not that long. However, I would like to share that I may stand up here with only a handful of neighbors here today, but 100% but of the people that I've spoken to in my neighborhood are outraged. They do not like this. They have questions and they have the ugly feeling that the golf course has attempted to sneak this in on us. To the mayor and each member of the city council, I just sincerely ask you, do you have solar panels in your backyard that more importantly have no benefit to you whatsoever? And if you don't, how would you feel if they were coming into your neighborhood with no more than a few weeks notice, though this has been in the works for months? Take it from me and my disappointed neighbors. It's not cool. And we would like some answers. Thank you for your time and please review the pictures and articles I have provided to the city clerk. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Jennifer Johnson, please give your name and address for the record, Ms. Johnson. My name is Jennifer Johnson. My husband and I live on 9433 Trevino Terrace. Our house is the closest to the proposed solar array and is about 10 feet above the level of the ground that the proposed solar array is to be built on. Therefore, the huge solar array cannot be screened from our view or our neighbors. Our view will be looking on the side and top of the solar array panels from every window, deck, and balcony of our house. It will be an eyesore and bring our property values down and may even make it impossible for us to sell the property. Who would like to have a large solar array as their only view? And please don't get us wrong, we are in agreement with the eco-friendly aspect of solar panels, but not right in front of our house, which will be detrimental to our everyday lives. We'd like to know why we were not told earlier by the Patuxent and Green um, Golf Club of the solar array plan. The flyer the golf club put on each residence's door was very ambiguous with no clear explanation as to what they were planning to do. All the residents we've spoken to were not aware of the plan. Why did Patuxent and Green's golf club not directly contact residents like us who will be directly overlooking the proposed solar array area and get our input? Why was our homeowners association board not contacted by the Patuxent Greens Golf Club to tell them of the proposed solar array? Has any other site on the Patuxent Greens Golf Club been considered for the solar array? Does the solar array emit any sound that we, being the closest home, will hear? We have, I have attached pictures of the present views from our house, which will be destroyed if the solar array is built. My husband is fighting cancer and other health issues, and we bought this house two years ago because we're now on a fixed income, and therefore he spends a lot of the time in, in the house. It's got a wonderful view of the golf course greens from every window, deck, and balcony of our house. This is why we purchased it. In the evening, we watch the deers graze on the green. The view is therapeutic for my husband on days that he doesn't feel very good. This was supposed to be our retirement home. 
and I have attached pictures which I will give to the thing that they can see what where it's going and what and the houses are on the corner we don't have a back and front so every view looks Thank you, Mrs. Yes. Johnson. The next person signed up to speak is Michelle Allen. Ms. Allen, once again, if you'll give your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. I am Michelle Allen, 9437 Trevino Terrace. Thank you for hearing me today. When was the last time you visited your neighbors? On Trevino Terrace, there's a pleasant, close-knit, quiet type of community. It's a community where you can step outside and have a friendly chat with a neighbor or walk your puppies in the morning or see kids riding their bikes, playing and laughing. We live in townhomes, so we don't really have big lawns, but we have a great backyard. The golf course has always been a place where you could stand outside and take in the wide green scenery. My daughter, my husband, and I have taken walks played catch, run races, and sometimes just sat out along that backyard to have a quiet moment. And we visit our neighbors. We contribute in many ways by giving our patronage to the country club and its facilities. Somehow I find it sad that with little notice and even less thought, the Patuxent Greens Golf Course would seek to interrupt and quite possibly remove that small luxury that we enjoy as neighbors and fellow property owners. It seems to me that you ask us to suffer all of the inconveniences while we share none of the benefits. At the very least, I know that I'm but one person, but I would request that the golf course reconsider this initiative and allow the families next door to keep what I would call our backyard, one of the com comforts of home. I would also ask that before finalizing such a movement that you visit your neighbors along Greenview to get a firsthand view. We'd love to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Jonathan Lee. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jonathan Lee. Uh, I live at 9451 Trevino Terrace, below Maryland. Um, I've been a, a resident of Patuxent Greens uh, community for over 15 years. And when I heard of this, um, I was very upset that we were not properly informed of what was actually going to take place. Um, and one of, the me one of the main reasons why I actually brought was because of the view of the golf course, the greenery. Um, there's also a paved, we have the paved walkway that runs throughout our entire community um, from one end to the next that looks, overlooks the golf course. Um, I take that route uh, on a regular basis. I ride my bike and I walk um, and I enjoy the view. Um, I do that just for the view. And not just only myself, but a lot of other residents do the same. Um, I'm totally uh, for support of uh, green living and energy, um, but I'm sure that Patuxent Greens could do more, uh, could put more of an effort in finding uh, other alternative areas for installing these solar panels, um, which is the property is over 100 uh, acres, as uh, Mr. Allen mentioned. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that we can work together uh, with long-term neighbors um, to our community to find a location again, um, a better place for these panels um, that would make keep both, both parties happy. So um, I also have an uh, attachment that I want to present um, you guys as well. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Uh, Odessa Phillip. Good evening. I actually am losing my voice because I was screaming at the Redskins. So um, I would like to hand my it didn't help us very much, did it? Oh. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Good evening. I'm going to speak from some written comments and then kind of expound a little bit at the end. Uh, my name is Odessa Phillip. I live at 9407 Nicholas Lane. I would just as a, add as a caveat that my house does not abut the golf course, but I live in the community, and I'm equally outraged. I've been a property and owner in the community since 2000, and I've sat on the board of our homeowners association for several years. I am a Maryland licensed professional civil engineer with the company headquartered here in Laurel. In my business, I regularly consult with government agencies on public outreach regarding construction projects, 
and have over 15 years of experience working on large-scale property uh, projects that are adjacent to communities. The one of note, which is good and bad, is the intercounty connector. I was the person who did all of the public outreach and led and created that public outreach effort. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to offer comments on this proposal to add a solar panel array to the Patuxent Greens golf course, which abuts the villages at the Greens Patuxent community. I have a few comments related to this proposal that I would like to be considered for the record. Despite the good faith dissemination of an invitation to attend a meeting about improvements being made to the golf course, in my professional opinion, the community was not clearly informed in the meeting invitation about the proposal so that they would understand the potential visual impacts to the property. The proposer should have considered providing early communication with the community leadership in addition to general flyers disseminated on the doors of community homes so that leadership could be educated on the proposal and could share the information with the community in a more comprehensive manner. The mitigation measures that are proposed do not offer really helpful solutions to the impact on the view shed for the properties adjacent to the golf course. The presentation that they provided doesn't indicate if other locations on the property were considered, which is pretty typical on construction projects. I believe the proposal would have been better received if the options considered were presented to the, to the community and an explanation of why other alternatives did not work so well was given indicating to us some sort of an alternatives analysis. I believe a few other mitigation measures or any combination of these should be considered for this and any other projects similar to this with respect to adjacent property owners, one minute left, okay, property owners such as lowering the profile of the project to the fullest extent possible, i.e. you could trench the foundation structures so that you would change that elevation view. Constructing a berm between solar panels and community to provide additional visual screening. Including a combination of shrubs and trees to provide a more visual screening for the property owners. Unfortunately, when you construct uh, just trees, when you just plant trees, they're very, very small. It'll take several years for them ever to be mature enough to provide any screening. And the ability to offer some solar energy benefits to the adjacent property owners, preferably at a discount. I would like for the golf course and their representatives to work closely with our community to help alleviate our concerns so that we can come to this council united with support for this very green energy project. Of course, everyone may not be happy with the overall outcome, but showing a true good faith effort to provide an earth friendly option that considers also being a, a good neighbor to an adjacent community would be welcome. Of course, I, I do give my contact information, which I'm not gonna give on the record, but Absolutely. if you have any additional questions, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Phillip. Matt Tedesco. Your, your name and address for the record, sure, please. Uh, for the record, my name is Matthew Tedesco, uh, the law firm McNamee Hosey here on behalf of uh, Tucks and Greens Golf LLC. Um, Mr. President, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you and speak. Um, certainly I can, uh, understand the community's uh, comments and we I appreciate them um, just for a point of clarification um, there's been a lot of comments regarding notice um, as the council may be aware through conversations with your staff there was a lot of um, back and forth as far as what requirements were actually going to be uh, levied upon uh, my client with respect to providing the solar array that was proposed whether it was a zoning application or legislation. So that was worked through with the help of your attorney and, and staff as far as what the actual application was going to be. That wasn't decided or determined till the end of August. Um, immediately thereafter, within a week, a week and a half, 10 days, we sent out the, the notification to the community, which was is not a requirement under the law, um, albeit um, we felt necessary. Um, to provide some type of notice because no other notice otherwise would have been required or even needed. Um, <clears throat> not to say that that appeases the community and the members that you're hear, uh, hearing from tonight, I understand. Um, obviously, everybody wants as much notice as possible. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is legally no notification were required based upon the determination that was needed. 
However, as soon as we found out that, that what the process was going to be, we did immediately notify the community and held a, a public work session. Could things have been made clear? Sure, absolutely. Um, this was the first attempt for any of us going through this. So I, I just offer that just for a point of clarification. Um, I, I certainly, certainly sympathize and understand the community's frustration with um, possibly not having the type of information provided in the notification um, that they otherwise may have wanted or required under an, another application process. Um, this text amendment, although the Patuxent Greens Golf Club uh, will act within it, um, this legislation is really a citywide legislation and is to promote renewable energy. Um, I think everyone here is in agreement that renewable energy is a good thing. Um, understanding the cost and the impacts of renewable energy, uh, solar panels are what they are. Um, I think that the bill does a, a more than adequate job of providing requirements for any applicant, whether it be Patuxent Greens or, or any applicant that would uh, seek to construct such a project would have to abide by. Site plan approval through your, your planning committee, um, setbacks, buffers, landscaping, uh, so forth and so on, height restrictions, um, which Mr. Brock went through uh, in some detail, uh, which the uh, Patuxent Green Solar Project would absolutely comply with. Um, again, the intent of the legislation is to permit a solar energy collection system for non-commercial uses under, under certain circumstances. This isn't a, a blank check. Um, the legislation will put Laura on the forefront of encouraging and promoting the use of green technology and practices to offset current power generation and consumption through the use of alternative renewable energy, which I think everyone's in agreement is a good thing. Uh, the use of alternate, al alternate renewable energy is specifically and implicitly promulgated throughout the purpose and intent of the master plan by providing high quality of life through stewardship of land and conservation of natural resources. Um, I, I certainly understand the comments with respect to it's a large property. Have you done anything to look at other locations? Yes, the answer is yes. If that wasn't further vetted on September 11th at the community hearing, I apologize. Um, unfortunately, I was not in attendance at that meeting due to a a, a pat, my father passed away, so I wasn't able to attend. However, um, if more information is needed, I'm happy to leave my contact information and, and, and have additional meetings if that would be helpful. We're not opposed to that. Um, one thing I just want to leave you with is um, this project will help undoubtedly the viability, future viability and sustainability of the golf course, which I hope everyone in this room can agree on is an asset to, asset to the city and to this community. Um, we understand that the location of the array may not be ideal for, for some. The truth of the matter is, is given the property as it sits, in order to locate it somewhere else, it would require significant loss of trees um, on the property. So although it's almost 200 acres, this location is really the most ideal location. Um, and I think with the safeguards and the protections that are in the legislation, it does adequately address the concerns. Um, our fear, obviously, is given the cost benefit that this project will provide to the golf course, but for this legislation and the ability to move forward, um, the future viability and sustainability of the golf course likely becomes uncertain. And at that point, um, the vistas and the views and everything that we all in the community likes and the benefits that the club offers potentially get lost forever and is lost to either uh, lack of upkeep or redevelopment. So um, it's 1% of the total property that's impacted by the, the array. If there's further communication with the community that we can um, have, we're happy to do it. So with, with that, I hope that provides some clarification. I know I'm not gonna satisfy uh, everybody um, with with my comments um, but I'm happy to listen we're happy to listen and if there is a way we can uh, compromise I think we're willing to do it but as the legislation is drafted we find it ex 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 acceptable and provides sufficient safeguards and protections and um, we would certainly hope that this council would uh, support it thank you thank you mr. Tedesco Zabrina Epps name and address for the record please
Good evening, Chairman Smalls, Mayor Moe, and City Council colleagues. Um, my name is Sabrina Epps, and since 1998, I've lived at 9431 Trevino Terrace. I'm here tonight to testify on Ordinance 1808 that would amend the zoning law to allow solar panels to go in um, on the Patuxent Greens golf course. Before I speak directly to the ordinance, I want to make some remarks about the process. The Patuxent Greens golf course has failed to be a good neighbor to us. This is not the first time they've, they've planned a project or requested a change to the zoning to erect something on their property without including our community. Um, as you'll notice on the uh, attached um, picture, in 2012, um, I can recall going to work and coming home over, a couple, over several weeks, only to find every time that I came home, there were very large, very large pillars, wooden pillars, and then ultimately coming home to find um, netting around those pillars right off of my back deck. This is now the practice driving range um, that uh, people, I get to hear now the clink of people practicing their drives um, every morning and particularly on the weekends. Um, so we have that monstrosity right outside my deck and right outside my balcony window. In, a, in their current request to the council, the Patuxent Greens Golf Course has failed to do the following. Number one, pour, properly discuss and describe its plans to the homeowners and residents, despite the testimony from a previous, um, the previous testimony. Number two, provide an opportunity for input in the planning process. Um, and number three, provide mitigation or plans for alternative placement for the most impacted residents in our community. The golf course has done only the minimum required by law. I believe the previous uh, person who testified uh, attested to that over and over again that they did what was required by law, but they did the minimum, and I think that's shameful. It's not that I don't or any of my neighbors don't support solar energy. I, I would say we all do. It's, it's the fact that there's only been one meeting while the golf, golf course has been planning this for months. Regarding Ordinance 1808, I would like to include the following wording in the text amendment, and you have it in front of you now. To require a rendering of, in addition to everything else, um, businesses should also require a rendering of planned installation to be provided to the mayor, the city council, the planning commission, as well as the impacted community. And in addition, to require at least three community meetings to communities being impacted for the opportunity for the dialogue that the gentleman just described. Um, Laurel is a small and friendly uh, community that enjoys open spaces as been evidenced by the proclamations that were given this evening. We're not only here for us, the 156 units of the villages of the Greens of Patuxent, we are here for other neighbors throughout Laurel because we wanna make sure that when any business or, or developer wants to install solar panels that they do so responsibly and with our, our economics in mind, the value of our properties. We came here because we wanted to have a life for ourselves and we don't want that, those, our lives and our values to our properties to be diminished on the backs of you know, um, creating an opportunity for a business. So yes, we are open to dialogue. We would just like to slow this thing down to allow that opportunity to take place. I thank you for hearing and moving on this urgent manner, again, for myself and the other 156 units that will be affected um, if this is allowed to go forth without additional limits. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Epps. The last speaker I have signed up is Linda Griffin. Ms. Griffin, again, would you give your name and address for the record? Good evening. Linda Griffin, I am at 9315 Player Drive, Laurel, Maryland. Okay, I'm similar to them, but I don't live down there. I live right on the parking lot. And I started uh, looking at this. There are discrepancies. If you look at 20-20.8, C2A states that it shouldn't exceed 10 feet, whereas C2B states it shall not exceed 15. So, okay, I'm looking at this and it's like, okay, 
right off the bat, there's discrepancies and things always can change. You guys make the decision for these changes down the road. So it's not just about what's happening today. It's about what's going to happen later. So the total surface area of all ground mounted solar energy collection panels on the lot shall not exceed 1,200 square feet. This language is deleted. Do you know 28,000, not 1,200, 28,000 to 30,000. So that was the biggest thing. This thing's huge. <coughs> it's very big. I want to know, OK, oh, it's supposed to be so good. What kind of noise? Is it going to affect someone's inner ear? I have no idea. Does anybody have any idea what it's going to do to those people that are living down there? Can you tell me that? So the other thing is where it says non-commercial solar energy panels. Tell me what that means. Is it an interchangeable term that you're going to say, oh, a solar panel is this. Oh, but this is a non-commercial solar panel. You know, that can change too. So somebody can make money down the road once they recoup. This can all change. It says, oh, no, they're not going to sell it, this, that, and the other. But you know what? That all changes as well. These are my issues. And then we go on, and it's C2, B2. It says uh, uh, maximum allowable coverage for the zoning district. There's no explanation. I understand, you guys, this is all new. So if this huge array is the only thing in a zoning district, later down the road, you know, residents might want it. I don't know how this is all going to come into play. Is it anywhere else in Laurel? Do we have a solar array anywhere in PG County that we can at least go see up close and personal? Now, obviously, the golf course people have, right? You know? So, and then we're back to the um, scale drawings and vertical and horizontal. We saw blurry projected pictures. So maybe it's not final, but I, I couldn't see the picture. And then we're looking at a blurred screen, and I'm going up there trying to see it, and literally it's just a blurred screen. And I uh, have other things that I've commented on because I'm at the uh, parking lot, and all kinds of crap has happened at the parking lot. Forgive me for using that word. But we have witnessed gunshots and all kinds of silliness and men changing their clothes, and so I'm not happy about that. You know, you. I understand you're supposed to have a little golf course. Oh, yeah, it makes Laurel look good. Now we've got the nice new town center, right? But I don't appreciate going to my deck to see some man out there changing his pants. I just have one little copy. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. I have no one else signed up to speak on this agenda item. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the uh, public hearing at... 808. Uh, the <clears throat> second public hearing held on Wednesday, October 15th, 2014, at 7 o'clock p.m. Mr. President. Councilwoman Nicholas. I'd like to ask that um, the attorney for this property and Paradise Energy um, call an additional meeting so these concerns of our residents can be addressed. Thank you. Let me make sure. Let, let me let me make a comment. Um, give somebody your card. There needs to be a contact so that everybody in the community is aware of what's going on. Now, I just want to state a couple things real quick. This is not a done deal. This is a piece of legislation. It's a text amendment. Everything else still has to go before the planning commission when we talk about all these other things that have been brought up tonight. So there's still a long way to go here. Uh, this is a text amendment to allow something like this to occur citywide, not in one place, citywide, as you heard. And that's what we are looking at. Everything else, um, buffering, all of those things that were brought up in particular uh, that you brought up will come up at the Planning Commission. Uh, and staff will be doing theirs as well and listening to what you have to say. But the, the text amendment is not the piece that gets into um, you know, want seven trees here, I want them this height, that's the planning commission. So I would suggest that somebody from the community, contact within the community, Sabrina, I don't you know, maybe I just know you, so 
um, you're a good organizer, maybe be the contact, get his card, um, and I'm sure they'll bring everybody out um, and go through this, get some ideas from y'all. What they um, they are trying to work with the community, as I've said, I think it's this is a, something that we should look at from the text amendment standpoint. The rest will go to the planning commission and others, but these are the types of things that we need to look at in the city, um, and I think. We're kind of uh, behind the eight ball. If you look over in several areas of the city, there are <coughs> solar panels going up all over town and houses and other places, and we need to prepare for this. So uh, we want people's input. We want to do the best job possible. Will we make everybody happy? Probably not, but I think that um, having one contact to make sure the community is aware, we'll, we can provide a facility if you all need a meeting place, those types of things. Um, so just you know, let us know, but I would su suggest get a card and then kind of go from there to make sure we get everybody um, there. And actually at the meeting I attended and some of y'all were there, I think several did say that they would come back and meet if need be. So um, I just want to make sure everybody understands it's not a done deal. This is a text amendment for one piece of, uh, uh, to make sure that it even gets into the code so that it can move forward. So I don't know if Jack had anything to add or not. Did yeah. you have anything to add, Jack, or Beth? <laughs> Only to echo what the mayor said. This is the first public hearing. This is introduction. The next goes to the planning commission for review, changes, recommendations, and it will come back to council uh, for a vote on the tax amendment itself. Uh, but that doesn't approve the individual plan that they may submit. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Councilwoman Nicholas, you had a comment? That was it. <clears throat> So I just want to encourage uh, every resident who uh, is here tonight and, and your neighbors uh, to, to watch our, our agendas for when the Planning Commission will meet uh, and, and turn out and speak before the commission as well. Uh, as the mayor stated, as Mr. Brock stated, uh, that's the, the body that will make those kinds of recommendations uh, and determinations uh, regarding some of the things that you're certainly uh, concerned about. So I encourage you to do that. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you. We'll move to agenda item 11, the introduction of first public hearing on ordinance number 1809, an ordinance to amend the operating budget of the Marion City Council of Laurel, Maryland for the fiscal year July 1, 2013 through June 30, 2014. Ms. Saylor. I just want you all to know we're very glad that you all are here tonight to fill the chamber since it's our first meeting and every, we're testing all the mics, so <laughs> thank you all. Good evening, Mr. President. Um, this ordinance 1809 is the sixth amendment to the FY14 operating budget. Uh, this is our closeout ordinance which provides for transfers necessary in parks and recreation, both programs and maintenance um, due to issues that arose from the severe summer of 2013 and the winter of 2013-14, allowing for transfers among the many sub-departments. Additionally, there were changes in work assignments and public works between those major categories. There were additional uh, red light camera ticket revenues um, with offsetting processing expenditures and the use of court awarded seized currency for um, investigative equipment for the police department as well as an adjustment to the debt service budget for a um, loan proceeds issuance costs from a previous um, loan that we uh, undertook with the state of Maryland and this adjusts for uh, personal property tax and transit overlay tax collection shortfalls. So the overall change is an increase of $51,830, bringing the total budget to $31,259,420. Thank you, Ms. Saylor. I'll open the public hearing at uh, 815. I have no one signed up to speak. Is there anyone who'd like to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at uh, 8.15. And council, I'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules. Suspend the rules, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman Les. Second. 
Thank you, Councilman Briggs. Uh, Ms. Rao, please call the roll. Mr. Lez? Yes. Mr. Ricks? Yes. Ms. Crary? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. President Smalls? I vote yes. Councilman Lez, would you make the motion to adopt? Mr. President, I move for the approval of ordinance number 1809, an ordinance to amend the operating budget of the Mayor and City Council of Laurel, Maryland for the fiscal year July 1, 2013 through June 30, 2014. Councilman Ricks, second. Would you second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Rao, please call the roll. Mr. Les? Yes. Mr. Ricks? Yes. Ms. Crary? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. President Smalls? I vote yes. Mayor Mao? I concur. Agenda item 12 is the introduction and first public hearing on ordinance number 1811, an ordinance to amend certain project budgets in the FY 2015 through FY 2020 capital improvement program. I've read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open the public hearing at 817. Ms. Saylor. Mr. President, again, we discussed this at the work session last week. Um, this ordinance serves to close out the project budgets for Mulberry Street improvements, Clubhouse Boulevard improvements, uh, a change in funding for Cherry Lane improvements, and the closeout of Little Montgomery Street improvements, with those funds being transferred for bridge repairs, street repairs and safety improvements, Cherry Wood uh, improvements, and the Laurel Bikeway, um, I'm sorry, Cherry Wood improvements. Um, additionally, uh, Public Works applied for a grant with the state of Maryland and received for the city a $200,000 grant for the Laurel Bikeway to complete construction on Van Dusen Road, as well as a grant that was obtained by Mr. Lotsky for park improvements, which will complete the funding at Centennial Park for the skate park and the um, replacement of the playground unit there. Additionally, there are um, increases to the information technology budget to provide the um, police department <coughs> monitoring of the city facility alarm programs and the energy efficiency improvements budget has been decreased as well as the emergency operations center budgets and the closeout of the Laurel Municipal Center renovation budget. Thank you, Ms. Saylor. I have no one signed up to speak for this agenda item. <clears throat> Excuse me, is there anyone who'd like to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at 819 and council, I'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules. Mr. President, I move to suspend the rules. Thank you, Councilman Lez. Is there a second? Thank you, Councilman Ricks. Ms. Rao, please call the roll. Mr. Lez? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Ricks? Yes. Ms. Crary? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? President Smalls. I vote yes. And again, Councilman Les, would you uh, care to make a motion to approve? Mr. President, I move to for the approval of ordinance number 1811, an ordinance to amend certain project budgets in the FY 2015, FY 2020 capital improvement program. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Rao, please call the roll. Mr. Les? Yes. Mr. Ricks? Yes. Ms. Crary? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. President Smalls? I vote yes. Mayor Mel? I concur. Agenda item 13 is the introduction of the first public hearing on ordinance number 1812, an ordinance to amend chapter 18, buildings and building regulations, article 13, development construction, division one, development construction requirements, generally to comply with the uh, Annotated Code of Maryland, Environmental Article, Title IV, Subtitle I, providing an effective date. I read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open a public hearing at 821. Jack Mr. Brock. Jack That's good. It's part of the mayor's exercise program. <laughs> Ordinance number 1812 is an amendment to Chapter 18, Building and Building Regulations of the City Code. This is dealing with sedimentation and erosion control. In spring of this year, 
the Maryland Department of the Environment audited the Community Planning and Business Services Department and reviewed their erosion and sedimentation control plans and processes. Uh, they also reviewed the city code and they're making uh, uh, several recommendations to change the code to be in compliance with state statute. First of these is expanding the definition of clearing, uh, also modifying exemptions, single family residences or an accessory building on a lot of two acres or more. Uh, that disturbs areas greater than a half area half acre are no longer exempted or would no longer be exempted modification of erosion and sedimentation control plans uh, they are recommending the deletion of a minor plan to be defined as increasing of size of sedimentation control earthen dikes trap devices greater than the minimum required and an incidental disturbance beyond the identified level of disturbances uh, that are immediately stabilized. Uh, these are the recommendations that are recommended by the MDE in order for the city to be in, in compliance with state statutes. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Brock. I have no one else signed up to speak on this agenda item. Is there anyone who'd like to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at 824. The second public hearing with possible action will be at the next mayor and city council meeting on Wednesday, October 15th, 2014 at 7 o'clock p.m. Agenda item 14 is the introduction and first public hearing on ordinance number 1813, an ordinance to amend chapter six elections of the code of the city of Laurel to make certain violations of election laws municipal infractions, to require a candidate to file a financial disclosure report upon the filing of the candidate's initial paperwork, to re require that in-kind contributions be reported on all financial disclosure forms, to define in-kind contributions and require that they be reported to require that Board of Election Supervisors meet the first Monday in October to accept the required documents for nomination for each candidate, to provide a recount procedure and other non-substantive substantive changes generally related to elections in the city. I threw that word in just to trip you up. Yeah, so. you did a good job, <laughs> believe me. I read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open a public hearing at 825. Mr. Manzi. There's been one minor change uh, since the work session. If you look on page one at the bottom and the top of page two, uh, there's a section in the new uh, local government article which now provides that the state prosecutor or the state's attorney for Prince George's County may prosecute uh, persons for the violation of certain offenses that are set out in state law. So I felt it was appropriate to put this section in the uh, in our law. It's not absolutely necessary, but I, I, I sensed uh, Marty and I talked about it. In fact, Marty is the one who sent me the email reminding me that we had talked about this a while ago. And I thought that it was appropriate to put this in here. It's not absolutely necessary, but since we're going through our laws and trying to make them all inclusive. I thought it was appropriate to make it all inclusive so that when people are looking at our, our law, they're, they're absolutely clear as to what will or could happen to them should they violate any of our election laws. Thank you, Mr. Manzi. I have no one else signed up to speak. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item? Okay, if you come forward and give your name and address for the record. My name is David Johnston. I live at 15028 Cherrywood Drive, Laurel, Maryland. I wasn't planning to speak on this tonight, but I've actually run for the city council. And I'm wondering the, um, if there would be a chilling effect if you had to, a candidate had to file an initial financial disclosure report when he starts the campaign process. I just wanted to make the process, I guess, 
amenable to all sorts of people wanting to file, not make it more complicated up front. And I wondered if that would have a chilling effect if you would see some candidate who would file a disclose, financial disclosure report that had a lot of money at the beginning of his campaign and it might scare other people away. What? Always have. Okay, when I ran, I guess I didn't have to file an initial financial statement. Change the lot. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Either that or you may have been in violation. <laughs> well, I did file my final one. And someone well, running with me. I've run for office, you've always had to fill out an initial disclosure form. Okay, I don't know how burdensome that is. But yeah. That was no, just my initial. Um, okay, I don't. All right. It's a few pages. Right. I think it's still the same. Yeah. It's the same. yeah. Okay. Same yeah. Well, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, President. Thank you. Other members of the council, nice to see you again. Thank You're you. facing the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone else who'd like to speak on this agenda item? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing uh, at 827. The second public hearing with possible action will be held at the next mayor and city council meeting on Wednesday, October 15th, 2014 at 7 o'clock p.m. Agenda item 15 is the introduction and first public hearing on Charter Resolution number 168, a charter resolution to amend Article 600, Registration and Elections of the Charter of the City of Laurel by amending Section 604, Election Equipment, to remove from this section the powers of the election judges, Section 605, Voting Procedures, to clarify early voting, Section 606, County Ballots, to provide when paper ballots are to be tallied, Section 608, Certification of Election, to delete the time at which the Council must meet, Section 609, Failure to Elect Runoff Elections, to clarify when runoff elections shall be held, adding 610A, write-in ballots, providing that write-in ballots shall be allowed and counted and other non-substantive changes to the aforementioned sections. I've read the title to the record. For the first reading, I'll open the public hearing at 8.30. I have no one signed up to speak. Is there anyone who'd like to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at 8.30. Uh, the second public hearing with possible action will be held at the next Mayor and City Council meeting. Wednesday, October 15th, 2014. Agenda item 16 is Charter Resolution number 167. A charter resolution to amend Article 300 of the Charter of the City of Laurel entitled Government by amending Section 310 City Council to provide that candidates must reside in the ward for which they seek election for 365 consecutive days prior to filing for office in such ward, and council members elected from a ward must remain a resident of the ward and a registered voter while holding office. Amending section 311, salary of council members, and section 351, salary of mayor, to provide for salary adjustments for the mayor and city council or council members when city employees receive adjustments and to provide that the mayor and city council members are eligible for health benefits the same as any other city employees. Amending section 312, meeting, oath of office, and section 352, oath of office, to provide that the mayor and city council take the oath of office at the second meeting after the election. Amending section 355, appointments, to remove blank. To remove, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, and other non-substantive changes to the aforementioned section of the city charter. I read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open a public hearing at 8.32. I have no one signed up to speak on this agenda item. Is there anyone who'd like to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at 8.32. The uh, second public hearing with possible action will be at the next mayor and city council meeting on Wednesday, October 15th, 2000.
14. Agenda item 7 is the introduction of first public hearing on resolution number 12-14, a resolution to establish a youth services commission in the city of Lower Maryland to provide for its membership and duties. I read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open a public hearing at 8.33. I have no one signed up to speak on this agenda item. Is there anyone who'd like to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at 8.33. Second public hearing with possible action will be held at the next Maryland City Council meeting on Wednesday, October 15th, 2014 at 7 o'clock p.m. Let me ask something real quick. Mayor? Uh, but, Mr. President, before we adjourn, we'd like to, anybody that has suggestions or comments, can you hear well? Do they need to, we need to adjust certain things. We'd like to get your feedback. Um, we put the press all the way in the back, so hopefully they can hear. You guys hear okay back there? That's what we like. But we'd like to uh, get some feedback from you all if you, if, you know, if you see things. We're trying different things on the monitors. You can see Ms. Rao for that if there's some ideas you have. And all the staff is getting their exercise coming back and forth. But we're going to, we, for the next several meetings, you may see changes. But if you have ideas, we'd like to get that feedback from you as well. So thank you all. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mayor. That concludes our agenda. If there's no other business to, become, to come before the Mayor and City Council, this meeting is adjourned.